Hey everybody, uh, it's Jim here. Today we're going to do a brake replacement on an Airstream Flying Cloud 30. But today we're going to replace all four wheels, um, brakes, and I'll show you how it gets done. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to chalk the wheels on the opposite side that I'm working on. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, jack up the trailer. So I'm using an 8-ton bottle jack. I'm going to jack it up right on the frame there. Between the tires, I like to use a piece of wood on the bottom and another piece of wood on the top just to make sure I spread out the load. Don't crack my concrete and don't bend up the frame. Okay, now uh, we're going to use this 19-millimeter uh, impact socket along with my cobalt brushless 24 volt impact driver. I'm going to remove my wheels. I've got the trailer jacked up enough to do that. And uh, we'll take the wheels off, remove the drums, and uh, get into the brakes. So if you've got uh, an Airstream, you probably have um, a steel lug with a chrome-plated cap. Let's get rid of the chrome-plated uh, caps and uh, replace them with these one-piece chrome steel lugs. You can get them on Amazon or your auto parts store. And this makes it much easier to get your wheels on and off. You're not going to have to fiddle around those stupid chrome caps. Here's another thing I want to show you, which is the uh, Centromatic wheel balancers. I have these on all four wheels. And basically what these are is it's a, a steel tube. It's got some liquid inside there and some ball bearings. And as your wheel rotates and vibrates up and down, those ball bearings move in a way that helps keep that wheel balanced. So in fact your wheel is self-balancing at your wheel and your tire, your drum, everything. It balances everything while you're driving. It keeps it balanced all the time. All right, next we're going to take off the uh, Neverlube hub cover. These Neverlubes have been on here maybe 40, 50,000 miles. Not a bit of trouble. I'm going to take off the cover so I can get to the nut and the snap ring and remove the hub. All right, we've got the uh, we've got a good start on the hub cover. I'm going to get a larger screwdriver and uh, pop it on off. And now that we're inside the hub, you can see a snap ring right here. We're going to take that off, and then we can take off this castellated nut, and that'll allow me to pull the hub off. Got the split ring off. The sticker off. I'm ready to take off the hub nut. All right, the hub requires a 1 and 7 16th inch socket. And when you look at it, it's got this sort of castellated feature here. And it acts kind of like a spring to make sure that it doesn't come off. But you've got that snap ring on there too. And once we get that off, we're ready to pull off the drum. You got a washer there. Don't forget to pull, pull that back off. Um, I'll put that back on after you're done pulling the drum off. So we'll get the drum off here in a second. And here's the uh, inside of the brake. If you've never looked in there before, you've got a electromagnet here that will, when it's energized, it rides against this bearing plate on your drum. Once that contacts the drum, it's going to want to rotate with the uh, wheel drum and it's going to activate this lever which will push these two brake shoes apart. You could just replace the brake shoes. If you look at these brake shoes, I still have quite a bit of uh, brake lining left on there. I don't really need to replace these. I'm just thinking after uh, eight years maybe maybe it'd be safer to do so. But I think they, uh, they're good. They don't have very much brake pad to start with and are good down to, I think, a sixteenth of an inch, and that, that looks like maybe uh, uh, three sixteenths of an inch left there. But you got other parts. You got this part here that can wear out. The self-adjusting mechanism is back here. I don't know if you can see it. When you, uh, when you back up, brakes adjust themselves with a little built-in ratchet. And a lot of those things can wear out or get rusted together, so we're going to go ahead and replace them. All right, there are five, as you can see, 14 millimeter bolts that have to come off. 
they have a built-in uh, lock washer on them, a star washer. Once those are off, the uh, backing plate will come off and just the two wires will be attached to the trailer. I'll snip the two wires and that will remove the uh, brakes from the trailer and then I'll splice the new wires on once I put the new backing plate on. I got these new brakes from um, a trailer and they put a nice little message in there. I don't know if you can see it or not. It says the bottom of this box should not be the end of our relationship. If we can help, please let us know. And then it gives you their phone number. Uh, a trailer who sent me these brakes did a great job. These are 12 inch by 2 inch, 12 inch diameter by 2 inch wide brakes. Um, they came right away. They cost me uh, less than half of what I'd have to pay if uh, I was get, trying to get them at my local Airstream dealer. And look at the, uh, the size of that brake lining on there. I've got almost that much left on my own uh, or, or old, eight year old uh, brake linings. So it must mean I'm pretty easy on the brakes. Uh, but there's a lot of other parts in there that can go wrong. Before I've had uh, these little arms here break and then when you're driving along you hear that clunkety clunk clunk as your wheels rotate that's not a good sign and that part can get jammed up in your hub so you don't want to have that and got that repaired under warranty by uh, Dexter. Alright here's the back side of the backing plate you can see there's a couple of uh, inspection holes here that you can pull out if you want to take a look at your adjuster. These are used on the um, manually adjustable uh, brakes to uh, move the little star wheel that makes your brakes uh, adjust. Here's the wires come out. I've cut those and you can see where uh, they go into the trailer and there was a splice uh, there before when these were brand new and the trailer was first. And one of the other things I wanted to show you was this is the adjuster and this is a self-adjusting brake, so this thing here expands. It's going to push the two shoes away from each other and closer to the drum. And that's how your self-adjuster works. Now, if you don't have self-adjusting brakes, you're going to come in through this hole down here. And you're going to use your screwdriver to move that ratchet wheel until your brakes are just lightly, your shoes are just lightly touching the hub. All right, so a couple of things I noticed is two springs up here versus one spring up here on the old Dexter. Um, because we have two springs, we have to have a spring attachment point. We don't have that on the Dexter. Um, the pucks, pretty much the same. Let's look at the brake pad or brake shoe surface area or thickness. The new one is just about the same thickness as the old one. So I guess I didn't use my brakes very much on my trailer. It stopped just fine. All right, I have uh, clipped the wires to the old brakes and now I'm gonna strip them using my uh, wire strippers here. And then I'm going to use these waterproof uh, butt splices. A butt splice is when you put the two ends of the wires uh, directly up against each other. And what makes these waterproof is uh, there's some heat shrink uh, material. So when I heat it up it's going to shrink that right up tight around the wire. If you don't have heat shrink uh, butt splices you're not going to be waterproof but you can use this kind of heat shrink material and you can slip it over the wires and uh, heat shrink that down and that will give you uh, some waterproofness or you can put electrical tape around it but I don't recommend that. Now these wires have a little kind of a container that they fit in and that's just to keep them from flopping around and getting caught on something. It provides a little bit of extra protection but not very much and they have these uh, wire ties, uh, zip ties that are used to hold everything together. And you can see the other zip ties here on the uh, axle arm that uh, hold that wire in place. So you don't want to don't mess with this any further back than the splice. I just cut mine right off 
as close to the splice as I, splice as I could, and I'm going to splice the new wires in. My old splice was blue, so I'm going to, I'm going to use a new blue splice to uh, put this splice on. The first thing I'm going to do is see how that splice fits onto the old wires there. Uh, blue is good for 12 to 14 gauge wire. The wire coming out of the trailer is uh, in the 14 gauge range, but the wire coming out of the brakes is a little smaller. So we'll see what we see what we have after we get it crimped. Uh, it usually takes me two or three of these to get the crimp right. But we'll see if I can do it one one pass this time. All right, so uh, I've got the splices on there. I gave them a little tug to make sure they're okay. You don't have a whole lot of uh, room to work with here on these guys. So what I did was I just put everything up on the stool and then that way I could bring the uh, wires closer together. Now all I gotta do is flip this around and put it, put the uh, bolts back on to attach it to the axle. You can replace the bolts, nuts, and washers holding the backing plate on when you replace the brake assembly. I like the nuts with the attached star washers, but you can use regular lock washers. Torque the nuts down in a star pattern to between 45 to 70 foot-pounds. You might have to back off on the brake adjustment wheel a little so the brake drum will clear the shoes as you mount the drum. Push the drum all the way on the hub and make sure that it can rotate freely. Once you're satisfied the drum is on, replace the washer and hand tighten the nut. Use the impact driver to tighten the nut and then check to make sure it is torqued to between 145 to 155 foot-pounds for the Neverlube axle. After you've got the nut on, replace the sticker and then the circular retaining ring. If you do not have a retaining ring pliers, a small screwdriver can be used to pry one end of the clip on once the other end has been started in the groove. Reinstall the hub cover and tap it into place. I use a rubber mallet for that. At this point you can manually adjust the brake shoes back out until you can feel them just scraping on the drum. Put your wheel back on and you're ready to go. It takes about uh, 100 miles or quite a few stops for the shoes to bed themselves into the drums so be careful uh, your first 100 miles or so when you're making a stop.